Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for this invitation. I'm always happy to talk about plastics and even more about recycling. I know you have been having some very difficult moments during the pandemic. We are doing all we can to help because you are a very important part of our future. I have also noticed how much technological innovation has gone on at all levels of the plastic value chain, not least with sorting and recycling technologies. Many thanks for these efforts and for not giving up during these exceptionally difficult times. The Commission too is determined to stay on track. We already have a very good basis. The EU has the most ambitious waste legislation in the world, with stretching targets on plastic packaging recycling. I am determined to ensure its successful implementation. We have new targets for recycled content for beverage bottles. This measure has been the game changer for the plastic recycling industry. We will explore plastic recycling targets further for other products as well. And we will do much more than that. We have made some very big decisions over this last year. We have found common ground for a long-term EU budget and for the massive new instrument to help Europe deal with the pandemic's consequences, the Resilience and Recovery Facility. We now have an inter-institutional agreement on that and we expect its endorsement by the member states in the near future. The EU budget will go to the higher levels of the waste hierarchy, supporting the technologies of the future. The framework also includes a new decision on own resources, which breaks new ground. The first new own resource will be a contribution by the member state, based on the plastic packaging waste that is not recycled, starting in 2021. We are also on track with the new Circular Economy Action Plan, adopted earlier this year and with the chemical strategy for sustainability. The chemical strategy is important for the plastics industry for two reasons. There are upstream measures to ensure that products are safe and sustainable by design and downstream ones as well to increase safety and trust. But let's look at next year in a little more detail as we have a very ambitious agenda. There is a lot that affects plastics recycling, as I said at the beginning. You are often on our mind. The first thing to single out is the revised waste shipment regulation to be adopted in the spring. There are many reasons for the update, but one central idea is keeping more plastic waste in Europe. This is the best place for its effective recycling and its transformation into new products. Restricting its export is a great circular opportunity for EU recyclers, and we are ready to support you in coping with this new situation. Later in the year comes a major flagship initiative, a sustainable products initiative to really transform design. The idea is to establish a set of sustainability principles, which we can then apply to all products. This will include work on the digital product passport. These principles will guide our action on those seven key value chains we identified in the Circular Economy Action Plan. Textiles, buildings, batteries, electronics, food, and of course, plastics and packaging. We are still working on the actions for plastics, but most of the elements are now clear. The idea is to provide the right regulatory environment to support the growth of secondary raw materials market. That means, for example, reviewing the packaging and packaging waste directive to ensure that by 2030 all packaging is either reusable or recyclable in an economically viable manner. In this context, you can expect a clear definition of recyclable packaging, which will promote high quality recycling. This review will propose additional measures to limit the continuous growth of packaging waste and new targets and other measures to promote the uptake of recycled content. We already have ambitious recycled content targets under the single-use plastic directive and now we are developing implementing rules on how to measure this because we need robust mechanisms to verify quality and claims about recycled content. For this reason, we are closely following initiatives like EU's third plast. In addition, 
Through the revision of the packaging directive, we plan to facilitate the trade in high-quality secondary raw materials with criteria for an end of waste and byproducts. This will make it easier to move materials that are no longer waste around the EU. And lastly, all these policy objectives will be supported by new mandatory criteria for green public procurement. When we talk about boosting this market, we always come back to one element. Building trust in the quality of the material. Recyclers must lead the way here, developing the governance, transparency and quality measure, uh, management structures. We are following the developments very closely and we are ready to work with you on standards, which will be developed in the context of the Circular Plastic Alliance. We need solutions. Perhaps they will come with technologies like watermarking. They could be integrated into legislative proposals, if that is feasible from the legal and technical point of view. Finally, on plastics. We are also working on policy and legal framework for chemical recycling. There could be a role for these practices, but only if they ensure an overall positive environmental and climate performance from the full life cycle perspective. That's our agenda for the foreseeable future. And over you, of course, but my services are attending the conference and they will be very happy to fill in any gaps. The watchword will remain sustainability. It's there in the Green Deal. It's there in our sectoral legislation and will remain our guiding principle for the future. A greener Europe is stronger Europe and one that's more resilient for the future. Thank you again for your efforts in that direction, which have my full support and enjoy the conference.